think that a lot of people that start out doing graffiti have a need to express themselves and a, a need to kind of assert their identity on the world. You don't come from a good background, you don't come from a good school that didn't have an art program or whatever the hell it is, you need to compensate for that to like let people know that you're strong and smart and cunning and able. Tristan Eaton is a street artist who has managed to do murals all around the world. LA, Europe, you know, he's been in London, Germany, New York, he has tons of murals downtown. For those people who don't go to galleries, you can see his artwork when you're walking down the street, and that makes it accessible to a whole different public. Gus and I both know Tristan. We both went to, uh, to SVA with Tristan Eaton. Tristan was um, a great artist back then, a standout, and then years later we sort of uh, reconvened in the in, in the mid uh, the mid aughts, and you know Tristan's out doing a ton of street art, sides of buildings, coming up with his own personal projects. I grew up in a lot of different cities. My family moved a lot, but when I got to SVA, that's when I met people who could paint like Rembrandt but drink like Jackson Pollock, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I never had friends like that before. Yeah. So you guys are like a breath of fresh air to me, you know what I mean? Because I, I never really had friends that were like me that way. But back so then, it was amazing, though, it was amazing. Back then, you were running around doing subway trains and this sort of thing, right? Nah, I didn't do too many trains, man. I was doing walls, man. I was bombing, but... Were you going out late at night? I'm not a train guy. It, you... wasn't, it wasn't legal. No, I was doing a lot of illegal shit. Yeah, I was bombing all the time. Tristan has always been, he's very intense and he's very pure and he will always do great art at the end of the day. His vision has always been his own. He's always spoken with his own voice. And whenever we're in the same city, you know, this relationship between me and Tristan and Gus, we will always, you know, we'll meet up at my place or somewhere and we'll play chess and we will debate about art. I think it's all about PR these days, isn't it? And it was because of a late debate and argument with Tristan that I think that the idea for the show was born. It was artists talking about, debating about, arguing about art. And it was cool. I think when people talk about art, it's a conversation that people are having that doesn't seem approachable. So what Kareem and I want to do is just make it more accessible, not make it seem as though it's such a highbrow conversation. Gus is an interesting guy. He's a painter, I'm a photographer. My work is based on moments. His work is, is sort of more drawn out and more meticulous. Gus has art in the Smithsonian to think that someone that I know, that I went to college with, that I played chess with, and beat quite regularly at chess, has art in the Smithsonian is absolutely incredible. Drop your chin just a little bit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kareem Black is a photographer who is sent out on a lot of jobs to photograph whether it be, you know, Spike Lee, Bradley Cooper, America's Top Model. He was kind of the first to capture a lot of the New York party scene back in the uh, mid-2000s. I don't think Kareem and I share the same point of view on a lot of topics, but I think that is what will make the conversation interesting. I think it might be over my head. I think it might be Gus and I very rarely have the same point of view, and I love that about our relationship. I think it's like catnip. What I'd like to do on the show is I'd like for it to be a conversation uh, about art between artists. Answer questions, why are you doing what you're doing? It's all based around like slave collars that were, for certain people that were considered to be unruly. Nice. I love it, I love it. How does it make you feel? What are you trying to say? What is it? How do you make your work? So you gotta check out Tristan. I know he contacted you. Wasn't he doing like some mural about a freak show or something crazy? I don't know, we're in Coney Island. There's plenty of freak shows out here. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in his dorm room with him showing me like his sketchbook of all these crazy ideas and drawings he had. Like, it would fill the whole page from one end to the other with all these graphic drawings and stuff. No, nah, Tris always has something going on. He's always got, he always got that. Tris, D-Train. <laughs> <laughs>
long time. Good to What's see up? you. Man. What's good, doggy? Good to see you guys. Oh, what are you see, working doggy. on, man? Good, Look I'm at good, this. Good. This is more than a freak show. This is it, man. This is my freak show. <laughs> Coney Island yeah. art walls, man. I can. I love it. it. This is a perfect mix, man. Coney Island. Coney Island is so synonymous with freak shows. I kind of want to paint the modern version of that, which to me personally is. I see so much. So much happening here, so many different styles. I would love if you could walk us through. Well, I guess the title too, because I know it's the Kardashians yeah, well, um, is a freak show kind of. Yeah, it's in basically inspired by you know the notion of reality TV being our new freak show. You know where you know we're in love with the train wreck. We're in love with you know building up celebrities and then tearing them down. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you know the this family has had such a strange, toxic effect on the American public. It's but, like, it's like, it's like, it's like pop, but pop to be cooler. honest, pop I cooler. do think that that's not something that is uh, unique to them. I think that that's something that most, peop most people, most people would take that bait. Unique to them because they're on TV. Most people would take that bait. But it's most happening. people would, would say, look, if I could become rich, based on no real consequence Talent. to me, that's Talent. a new then thing. Then people will do this. But that's very most true people because will do this. These days you ask a kid what they want to do when they grow up, they say, yeah, I want to be famous. famous. That's because of these people. I think the first person to change it was like Teela Tequila, and then like Paris oh, yeah. Hilton, and like these people, yeah, like of sort of internet celebrities. But that's what this is about. You know, it's that's like a, 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 a very weird, bizarre, modern kind of freak show. And, and this is both this Kim, is, this is Kim's head on both. Yeah, Tim and Kylie. Yeah, the title is The Monster Within and The Fool That Follows. A lot of times it's imagery that creates kind of almost a mood board within the emotion I'm trying to get across about the topic. Okay. So it isn't always super literal, but it's called the monster within because you know when I see people like this in our pop culture, you kind of tell that underneath there's got to be this like deep urge for fame and a deep ambitious need that seems just monstrous. So it's about that monster within, and maybe about the monster it breeds within people watching it. As I was kind of researching this to do it, I wanted to see what a rhinoplasty actually looks like. You know, you look at Kim Kardashian when she's 17 to where she is now, she's completely different. Yeah. How'd you get that way? Yeah. I don't think little girls know. So you actually look up a rhinoplasty surgery, and it looks like that. It's pretty disturbing, man. It's pretty gross. Self-esteem. So, so I want to paint too, that kids. to show the kind of monstrous lengths that you know, go to become a beast. Yeah. Um, and then you know I add in lots of other elements to kind of like feed that tone. You know the intoxicating spiral. You know the. Who's this girl here in the green well, with the? This girl is actually a porno mermaid. The mermaids kind of for Coney Island represent. All right. Fair enough. So you know she, she became famous for a sex tape. You know, and she's one of the most famous people in our entire country. In the world. And oh, the right. gun here, what about this, this the, the, well, the handgun? That's kind of a reference to the madness that, you know, this kind of culture brings out in people. You know what I mean? We're in a society where we have these random shootings happening all the time. And I think a lot of it comes from the frustration we see with pop culture yeah. in our life and the kind of TV we watch. And the majority of America is isolated from the real world except for their television yeah. and the internet. And what they're seeing is not actual reality. They don't realize that a lot of every TV commercial they watch, there's an actor that was hired to be that way and models that are paid to be that pretty. So there's like a weird illusion that drives people to frustration. But again, it's not supposed to be exactly literal. Every little image doesn't have its own meaning. It only has meaning all together. Got you. I think it makes sense to me. There's so many graffiti writers. There's yeah. so many people who could have just told the same story that you just told. But almost nobody can say that they ended up here. What's the difference? For me, um, when I didn't have any money for art supplies or to even pay for the train, I was stuck in Brooklyn for so many years. It's broken, nothing to do. I could steal paint and walk around and paint in the streets. And that was amazing for me. And that gave me some sense of control over my life again. Every, everything was against me, you know, like the landlords, my bank, everyone was against me. And that was the one way I had some control. And that was liberating. You know, you could break down a door, climb to the roof and paint some shit. That's awesome, man, you know? And, you know, 
it's priceless. Well, what then made you say, all right, you know what? Because graffiti is thought to be like this sort of street style art. There isn't something that you go to college for, but you went to art school. What yeah. made you want to pursue art school in well, the midst dude, of this being your inspiration? Did. You know, graffiti came into my life way after I already knew I was an artist. You know, like at eight years old, I was making so much art that my parents were like, what the f do we do with this kid? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? I was prolific as a eight year old. Was your imagination <laughs> This crazy. It was outrageous. Dude, year, it was nuts. I was like, like drawing little characters, cutting them out of cardboard, putting stands on them. My dad would come into the room, there'd be like 30 cartoon characters populating my whole room. <laughs> you know? Nuts. And then I look back on that from like my toy design background. Because so you know what? A lot of people don't know he is a toy well, inventor. Of, you were part of a toy kid designer, robot, right? Kid Robot. Well, before Kid Robot, though, I got really lucky and I designed my first toy for Fisher Price when I was 18 years old, man. Uh, I love this, man. This is like the opening I of the wish, show right here. I wish <laughs> I had this, like, on the streets of New York. Boom. All right, so what are you Please about to do? Yeah, yeah. Right, right now, now. I'm uh, just adding some kind of, like, decorative detail. Okay. With the white lines. This is called the New York Fat Cap. Okay. That's what that is. So you're just trying to break up the line a little bit. Yeah, I mean, no real agenda, man. Just playing around with it, you know what I mean? And I like that because there's no way to fake it. There's no touching it up, you know? So it's just raw. And I like that about it. Do graffiti artists and street artists give each other a lot of, like, flack if they, if someone uses stencil or they don't <laughs> freehand <laughs> like you do? Because you know, Actually, is that a yes. source of pride where that, uh, that because you free, you freehand, well, like, you like is this. that a hierarchy? Or you'll you'll like, understand this. Yeah. To me, in the world of street art, spray paint, spray paint is like the oil paint of gotcha. street art. Okay. It's the hardest to do, it has the best effect, and you have the most respect for doing it and mastering it. Okay. You know, you do all this detail and you just spray fat cap right over it. You know, it takes the balls to do that because you yeah. might up and spend All the day the doing it. stuff you know? that you did, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, that, I like that about it too. You know what I mean? That's, that's I mean, do, 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 does your heart stop as you're doing it? Like, oh it shit. Used to, it used but now to be, you're like, just like. There are times when I just like scream out loud when I'm doing the line because it's, you know. Because there's no way to get it back. Like, ah! uh, it happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. You never know, man. He's living a dream, isn't he? I think that Tristan has achieved a uh, huge notoriety, he's speaking with his voice, his art is not compromised by, um, by money or by anyone else's vision, it's always what Tristan wants to say. I think that Tristan has achieved what all artists aim for. And the other thing is, I think that it's admirable that he's not stopping. There's still a chip on his shoulder that drives him, and I can relate to that myself. And it's. I like that. He's still evolving as an artist, even though he's achieved a level that all, most artists aspire to. The public work is even more important to me because regular people that interact with art, if they go to a gallery, the artist isn't there to have that conversation. Gotcha. So to be there and be able to interact with people and engage with them is super important. But also to be able to change their community and bring something new to their community, especially if it's a community that doesn't get a lot of love and attention, that can change the way everyone feels every day. I can imagine for you and Tristan trying to figure out and merge the commercial art world into what you might want to say personally and what that challenge might be. I wonder if we're going to end up having to see that with other artists that we work with in the future. I don't know. We'll, we'll find <laughs> out. I don't know. Where are we going after this? Well, only time will tell, but I know there are other artists who are working on stuff that will be something for us to see and show to the public. That's a big city. Yeah, Let's see it.